The quiet town of Turkey in eastern Hungary has been witnessing an unusual invasion on its trees, eagle owls. The protected field eagle owls are a rare occurrence in Hungary, as their main territory is Scandinavia and Russia, and they rarely venture into eastern Hungary. Residents of Turkey say the most they've ever seen together was seven, but now more than 60 field owls are sitting on trees in the town centre. I'm in my 74th year and I have never seen so many owls in this town ever. So many owls, well, well. Bird specialists known as ornithologists and nature photographers are flocking into the small town to observe the eagle owls and say the gathering is something of a world sensation. It's exceptional that so many field owls would appear in such mass in such numbers in residential areas. I have consulted with several international experts across the world and they say it has not occurred anywhere else. The field eagle owl may fly into residential areas if there's been extreme weather with lots of snow, but they stay in the outskirts. Such mass gathering inside residential areas is exceptional. The reason for the unusual owl behaviour is not clear, but experts say it's probably not linked to other strange bird behaviour around the world. One explanation could be that the field eagle owls are learning from the forest owls, and when their safe places in the fields are snowed under or flooded, they find a safe option in towns. Others, however, are saying that such a process could be more gradual and doesn't explain the sudden, unusually high numbers. One thing is for sure, the owls are keeping local and bird enthusiasts guessing about the forces of nature. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, January 25th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome everyone to this Eugenics News Bulletin. Um, new listeners, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I'll be posting a, a, a new poll today, later on today. Uh, the other one about the aliens just ended yesterday. Majority of the people, uh, over 70%, said that if there were uh, some kind of uh, acknowledgement of extraterrestrial uh, beings or aliens, uh, what would it be? And the majority of people said that it would be a pre-planned malevolent agenda uh, being carried out by uh, government and or corporations so um, you can check that out um, so I wanted to start out with just what eugenics is I'm not going to go all you know too deep into it because I'd like to just present my news articles but I thought I would just take a moment um, for possibly some new uh, new listeners um, to basically just get a you know like a, an idea of what eugenics is because it's a term that's not really used anymore but it is being carried out on you me and majority of the people, maybe less than 1% of the entire global population, is not having eugenics uh, carried out on them. Um, but we are, and I think that we should know what it is and understand um, that, it is, that it does still exist. And just because Hitler is dead and Stalin is dead doesn't mean that eugenics or Pol Pot's dead doesn't mean that eugenics isn't being carried out. No, they just changed the name to Planned Parenthood. Um, to uh, ramping up this whole vaccination uh, program to, you know, sex education while you're, you know, five years old. I mean, uh, uh, now the government in the UK is uh, giving text messages for sex advice for children. I mean, it's just, it's getting madness. It's, it's getting really, really bad. So the word eugenics comes from uh, the Greek word eugenes or good in stock, uh, hereditarily endowed with noble qualities, was coined in 1883 by our buddy Francis Galton in his inquiries into the human faculty and its development. An Englishman and cousin of Charles Darwin, Galton applied Darwinian science to develop theories about heredity, hereditary, uh, sorry, heredity and good or noble birth. And uh, I'll just tell you, uh, there's two sides of it. I'll just read this and we'll move on. There's positive and negative eugenics. Eugenics is a word with nasty connotations, but an indeterminate meaning. The first edition of the Encyclopedia of Bioethics, uh, and that's pretty much what eugenics is, right? Bioethics, that's what they call it now. It's also being called environmental environmentalism. 
So uh, it says here, phrases such as the survival of the fittest and struggle for existence came in to use at the end of the 19th century when eugenic societies were created throughout the world to popularize genetic science. Negative eugenics initiatives include marriage restrictions, uh, sterilization, or custodial commitment of those thought to have unwanted characteristics. Uh, positive eugenics programs try to encourage the population uh, perceived as the best and brightest to have more offspring. So, and uh, the one-child policy force abortions, of course, in China are a good example of that. This uh, second one, before we move on to the news here, is uh, social engineering, which uh, is similar to that uh, uh, term eugenics. The application of methods regarded as similar to engineering techniques and their emphasis or on practicality, efficiency, and moral neutrality in an effort to solve a social problem or improve the condition of society. But uh, just know this, that when they, when you hear about uh, them talking about the perfect man or, or um, you know, basically helping uh, uh, humans evolve, they're talking about splitting us into two different species. Just check out that article from the BBC uh, from a couple of years ago where they actually talk about it. Uh, scientists are in a BBC article talking about how they predict the species will split off into two. And that won't be done by accident, you know, just like the time machine. Uh, the old movie from the 60s, that will be done by design. That is social engineering. It won't just happen spontaneously, um, you know, uh, coincidentally. It's it's, it's going to happen for a reason because these people, these uh, people that are Darwinists, social Darwinists, they support that theory and they would like to see you uh, basically evolve into basically a short, fat pleb with half a brain, you know, if a brain at all, and just a little worker bee, and then they will, of course, they won't become superhumans like Superman. No, they'll just stay the same, <laughs> because they'll have all the nutrition, they won't have all the vaccines, the chemicals, and that, so. Anyways, so the first thing up we have is sick uh, golf residents beg officials for help. So this here, um, in an emotionally charged meeting this week, sponsored by the National Commission of the BP Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill, fishermen, golf residents, and community leaders vented their increasingly grave concerns about the widespread health issues brought on by the three-month-long disaster. And it says here, Today I'm talking to you about my life, Sherry Fulton told the two commissioners present. And it says, My ethyl benzene levels are 2.5 times uh, the 95th percentile, and there's a very good chance now that I won't get to see my grandbabies. What am I? What I'm asking you to do now is possibly to amend your report because we have got to get some health care. It says ethyl benzene is a form of benzene present in the body when it begins to break down. It is also present in BP's crude oil. And uh, it says I've seen small children with lesions all over their bodies. So we're going to keep moving. It says that we are very, very ill and dead is dead. So... Uh, BP spills uh, oil is washing up in people. Today marks nine months since the BP Deepwater Horizon oil, or sorry, offshore oil rig exploded, killing 11 workers and sending millions of gallons of crude oil pouring into the Gulf. Said uh, though the gushing well was capped last July, oil continues to wash ashore along the Gulf's coast. BP's oil is washing up in people's bodies, raising concerns about long-term health effects. And uh, you can go in there, and a link will be posted. Genetically modified oil-eating bacteria creating dangerous mutant organisms in the Gulf. I'll just read this paragraph and move on. Even the most creative science fiction movie could not have concocted the reality of what is taking place, both now in the Gulf, Mexico, and around the world right now. Uh, genetically modified oil-eating bacteria introduced in the Gulf as part of the oil disasters uh, remedi uh, remediation efforts is reportedly causing an emergence of various other mutant bacteria as well as increasingly severe harm to humans and the environment. So I'll just blast through here 7,000 buffalo and cows freeze to death in Vietnam after enduring a freezing cold uh, with temperatures in mountainous areas dropping to minus 4 degrees Celsius. Northern Vietnam is to undergo another fresh cold snap starting Saturday. And uh, we'll keep moving here. In the same article, different uh, source, U.S. pelicans turn up sick dead off Jacksonville coast. And um, here we go. A dead fish starting to wash up in Australia. And uh, there's more dead fish coming up in the Caspian Sea. Mass, mass fish deaths recorded in Caspian Sea. Uh, it says mass fish deaths was recorded in the Iranian sector of the Caspian Sea. Iranian Gulistan Province Nature Department uh, had said and hundreds of dead seals in Labrador. People on the north coast of Labrador say scores of dead seals have been washing ashore since early December. Romania, Romania, second wave of dead birds, hundreds of dead 
or agonizing crows have brought terror to a town in the eastern part of Romania. Since Saturday, the locals of Roman, a town of 80,000 people, have noticed that hundreds of crows fell to the ground dead or in agony in one of the local parks. On Monday, dozens of birds were struggling with death, unable to fly. Local experts, who all deny that it's all related, say uh, suspect that the crows might have been poisoned, but no verdict can be given before a forensic study is con uh, conducted. It says some three dozen starlings have also been dead in the continent by the Black Sea in Romania on January the 8th. Veterinarians concluded, what? That the starlings died of the cold and alcohol intoxication. So I got to lay off that bottle there. U.S. government commits avian holocaust with mass poisoning of millions of birds. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, is engaged in what uh, can only be called as an avian holocaust through its Bye Bye Blackbird program that has poisoned tens of millions of birds over the last decade. The USDA even reports the number of birds that is poisoned to death in a PDF document posted on the USD, uh, USDA website. So you can uh, check that out. And here it says this document shows that just in 2009, the following bird populations were poisoned and killed by the USDA using taxpayer dollars. Brown-headed uh, cowbirds, 1 million. European starlings, 1.2 million. Uh, Red-winged blackbirds, uh, almost a million. Canadian geese, about 25,000. Grackles, 93,000. And pigeons, 96,000. So, and uh, said thousands of crows, uh, turtle doves, ducks, falcons, finches, gulls, hawks, herons, owls, ravens, sparrows among other animals. So you can go and check that out. Like I said, all the links will be posted. Uh, next up here says bird fish kills quite common and that's the problem. The new year brought a spat of incidents across the United States and around the world in which large numbers of birds appear to have fallen out of the sky and thousands of fish were floating dead in rivers. As media reports multiple are multiplied of mysterious mass wildlife deaths and blogs and social media picked up on the story, the inevitable theories began circulating ranging from the outlandish, a sign of the apocalypse, I think it's all stage manufactured, uh, to the more plausible, a consequence of environmental damage, such as the Gulf oil BP disaster, which, you know, it can be. It couldn't be that. But uh, you can check this out, and it'll go through there and uh, basically tell you that everything's okay. It says USDA also knew about bee-killing pesticide. Next up, world continues to get warmer. It says here the World Meteorological Organization says the global warming trend will continue to increase unless greenhouse gases uh, emissions are cut. Global warming threatening species, the early effects of global warming and other climate changes uh, have sent the population of many species into a steep downward spiral from which experts say they will never recover. Europe begins to run short of water. Half of the Czech Republic's population could face water shortages because of climate change. Oh, so it's climate change. Okay. Uh, a top climate change expert warned. So the experts are warning us. It says here the new millennium consumption goals. A Sri Lankan uh, scientist is calling for the drafting of the millennium consumption goals to force rich countries. Oh, that must be us. We're just so rich, right? To curb the climate damaging consumption habits in the same way the poor have uh, millennium development goals to get them out of poverty. So, and they're trying to force a carbon tax. They're you know, pretty much uh, EPA has declared uh, CO2 a toxic waste, and and then Obama said it needs to be regulated. And the only people that don't want it uh, don't want a CO2 uh, cap and trade bill or a CO2 tax is the American people. So, federal government teaching farmers to participate in carbon markets that don't exist yet. The USDA is teaching farmers how to participate in carbon markets, despite the fact that such markets do not exist, and Congress, in rejecting cap-and-trade legislation last year, has refused to create them. So see, that was right. For many species, no escape as temperature rises. So it, you just saw about the weather, right? And it says here, um, actually, you can go check this out. I just wanted you to see the headline, because uh, a lot of this, it tends to be a feature article, and it just takes too long to read. Um, here we have climate report forecast, global food shortages by 2020. So it says agriculture is an enormous global industry, vital for human survival, but a new report by the um, Universal Ecological Fund paints a bleak picture about its f uh, future ability to provide for a booming population. So there you go. Too many people on the earth. We got to kill them. Got to call. All this warming that's causing and all this climate change that are causing uh, food shortages and water shortages. Icy weather kills seven Vietnamese. Uh, an official in state controlled media said a cold spell over the past three weeks has killed at least seven people as well as more than 20,000 cows and bulls. Bitter cold temperatures prompt school closures in the northeast. 
La Nina is a danger to the economic recovery. Inflation is back with a vengeance, and global weather patterns could make things much, much worse. La Nina weather phenomenon, little girl in Spanish, is causing havoc all over the world as it destroys crops and flood mines. And floods mines, it has already hit the price of coal, rubber, soybeans, palm oil, and wheat. And the phenomenon is expected to last until April. So it's a little bit of this. Maybe it's a lot of this. Maybe it isn't climate change at all. Either way, join me in part two. This is GGN. I'm Dar